There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. This is Cecilia. Hello. Cecilia, as I just said, uh, the review video that we just did of Olivia Manning's novel, School for Love, mm -hmm. will have gone up on my channel just before this, but uh, Cecilia is my litzy friend who lives in Singapore, and this is her second appearance on my channel. So we're just going to talk books. Okay. Why don't you start? What are we going to talk about? Okay, well... What do you call yourself again? Queen of Bail? I'm the... Actually, I have promoted myself. I used to be the Queen of Bailing. Queen of Bailing. But I have now promoted myself. To I am the Empress of Bailing. <laughs> Empress. Okay. So the Empress gave me this. This is from my bail pile. <laughs> the bail pile. And this is the Invisibility Cloak. How would you pronounce that name? Uh, Kufei, I Kufei, think. Kufei. Yeah. Translated from the Chinese by Kanan Morse. And I hated it. I read it for novellas in November last year, but I didn't like it. But you have I'll, a... I'll take anything NYRB. You have an NYRB fetish. I know. <laughs> What's that about? I Okay, I started uh, reading NYRB actually last year. And um, I just fell in love with um, the way, you know, they picked this uh, the collections. is. Stories is set in early 1900s, war stories, and uh, you know the way the authors actually see um, the world is uh, slightly different from the modern authors. So yeah, so I've been addicted to this and YRB. Great. Yeah. What is uh, so? Let me just say a bit about this. This is a obviously or not maybe not so obviously a Chinese novel, and it is set in modern Beijing. And I know that Cecilia is like me. She doesn't want to hear too much about a book before she goes in. I like to go into a book blind. So yeah. all I'll say is that the protagonist installs custom sound system in rich Beijing people's homes. Wow. That's the premise. Okay. Okay. What? So that's all I'll say. But I have to say that to me there wasn't much else to it. I didn't like it. But maybe you'll have a different experience. Is it bad writing or uh it or just, just a flat it just didn't theme? it didn't go deeper than any of that. So it okay. was just he went to this person's house and he installed this and there was kind of other dimensions but nothing held my mm. interest. But I finished it because it was so short. Okay. Well I'll give it a try. Give it a try and let me know. Yeah. Okay, so the next book is Seventh Cross. Also another in YRB. Yes, and that's by Anna Segers. Anna Seger. Uh, the reason why I picked this from Sean's uh, bookshelf. Oh, and I'm not giving her this one. This one's yeah. on my to-read pile. <laughs> this is, is uh, in my book depository wish list. Okay, anybody is going by me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll Anyone? put her wish list in the show notes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, my book club is uh, going to read uh, Anna Seger's other book uh, titled Transit. Transit. Yeah. We are going to read that for November this year. Britta, have you read Transit? I'm sure you have. My good friend Britta Bowler, who has her own booktube channel, is German. Okay. And she loved this book, and I'm wondering if she has read Transit. Probably. Probably she has. So when are you reading Transit? November. Okay. So Britta, I think you should fly over to Singapore. And, and join, join us in the discussion. for the meeting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, have you guys done this one yet? Uh, no. So probably for next year. Okay. Are you interested in buddy reading this with me on Voxer during oh, Women cool. in Translation Month, which I think is in August? Oh, cool. Okay. We could do our Voxer buddy read. Excellent. You think I about have, it. Put that I in, have two weeks holiday in August. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yes. So have you read anything by her or what do you know about no, her? No. Uh, I, just, I just read the blurb for Transit. Born 1900 in Mainz, Germany. Yeah. Died in 1983. Upper middle class Jewish family. So, ooh. Is he died in 1983? So what happened? Olivia Menning died in 1980. That's right. See? But, yeah. She joined the Communist Party in 1929. Settled in France in 1933. Fled the Nazis in 1940. With her husband to Mexico. Oh, her life sounds fascinating. Yes. Yeah, no, I've heard really good things about this, especially from Britta. So I'm looking forward to reading it. And okay. Maybe with you. In August. Yeah. All right. Okay, so a third book. 
that I picked from the bookshelves Ooh. is this. Ooh. Oliver Sacks, the man who mistook his wife for a hat. Okay, Oliver Sacks. Um, I don't know why, but I'm actually a fan of him. I don't know why. A fan? A fan? Yeah. I haven't really read his books. Uh, I came to know about his life when um, when I read an article about him dealing with cancer mm -hmm. in New York Times, I think. So I found out that he's actually a, a doctor, a physicist. Neuro something something? Yeah, neurologist, right? And um, he... Actually, Hollywood made a movie about uh, one of his books, Awakenings, Awakening, yeah. with Robin Williams, yeah. and that was awesome. Yeah, have you watched that? I have many years ago. Yes. Many years before I read this, I read this about three years ago, and this is uh, some of his clinical uh, stuff about people that had really unusual neurological disorders. The title is about a man who couldn't distinguish between people and objects and so he literally mistook his wife for a hat he thought his hat was his wife Amazing. or his wife was his hat yeah. i don't know if he tried to put his wife on his head or <laughs> what but i can't remember yeah. the writing is so would i say beautiful i would say beautiful he was a good writer he was a really good writer but he was such yeah. a compassionate yes doctor and I know him mostly, other than this book, I know him from the many, many interviews that he did for Canadian radio and other documentaries and stuff. Oh, okay. As a personality, he just had pr projected this warm yes. energy. He's very nice, He's very really gentle. a sweet, sweet guy. Yeah, and he himself guy. suffered from, I can't remember the name, it's something like prosopognia, but it's the face blindness. Yes, where you actually can't recognize people's faces. Yeah. Layman's word is face blindness. Mm -hmm. I forget the scientific word. Mm -hmm. But he studied it for years and then he developed it. Mm. So that means that he would not recognize his sister's face. He would not know her except by her shoes. Oh dear. And it's a neurological thing and it's just absolutely fascinating. And there's okay. stuff about that in here. But when he wrote this book, he himself didn't have it. Or... He, I, 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 can't, I don't know, but he wasn't diagnosed with it. Mm. So he was writing about it as, in his patients. Mm. But then later he himself realized that I'm face blind too. Oh dear. But just stuff like that, just fascinating. I thought, you haven't read this. I haven't read it, that. Very readable, except that at, I think at the end of each chapter, he gives uh, postscripts Boys. are oh. really jargony medical stuff. Whereas mm. the actual... Stuff oh, reads yeah. almost like fiction, like it's really mm. accessible and readable. And then these postscripts, like, oh my god! Mm. But yeah, really interesting. Yeah, the only book um, that he wrote that I read is uh, his memoir titled "On the Move." The one where his picture. How old was he in that picture? I'm not sure, but we're gonna put the picture 20s. up right there. Early twenties, probably. And he was so. Excuse my French. He was so fucking hot when he was, he was a young. Hunk. Yeah. I had no idea until that memoir was published just around the time of his death what a hottie he was in his youth. Yeah. I mean, he was a handsome older man, but you'd never thought of him as having been hot. You know, just like when you look at me, you don't realize <laughs> how hot I was. <laughs> but he was so maybe, hot! Maybe you should put on like a leather jacket, you know, on a Oh, there's got one right there. Oh. This is that. <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so that is uh, on the move. I love that book. It's uh it's about his life. Yeah. And it's really good. Uh, maybe uh, you you should read it. I would like to read it. Yeah, and uh his boyfriend, Bill Hayes, uh wrote a book I think one year last year or two years ago. It's titled In In Insomniac City. Mm -hmm. So it's about New York and Oliver Sacks. And Written after Sachs died, right? Yes. And how long had they been together? Mm, was no, it a secret a relationship? Few, no. It was a short relationship. It was a short relationship, but uh, Oliver was... I mean, I think that uh, Oliver had not been in a relationship for so long. I don't think until... Oliver Sachs came out until very near the end of his life. Yeah. He didn't really accept yes. it or act upon his... No, I or, think he's like... 
are not comfortable to be open to the family because you know there's a religion factor yeah. there. Yeah. And I don't know those details, but the, just yeah. really sad. But he did find happiness in the, yeah, in the very the end. end of his life. Yes. So that's something. Yeah, He's, he was very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to read that. Yeah. So read on the move and Insomniac City. Great, I shall. Mm. Those nights when I can't sleep, I'll read Insomniac City. Yeah. And Great. you won't be able to sleep. Maybe not, especially if there's more pictures of Oliver Sacks <laughs> as a young man. <laughs> All right. Okay, so... Okay, let me, let's me. let just bra pause. We'll leave the video running. Okay. I'm going to refill the wine. I have okay. one more book that I'm going to pressure you to take. Okay. And it, it'll be fun if you refuse. Okay. But if I can convince you to take it, that'll be fun. But you don't have to take it. Okay. You'll just have a little fun argument. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to find it. So, Cecilia, I have one more book on my bail pile mm -hmm. that the Empress of Bailing would like to gift to you. Okay. You just came from New York and how many pounds how many kilos of oh, gosh. Books, books did you lug okay I went to a book expo and I was being very picky with the with the books right and yet I collected 20 books in total and on top of that of course I had to buy some NYRBs right okay so I probably have about eight NYR, NYRBs with me yeah so you're almost so at full capacity. No space. No space. And this one is small. Yeah, this one is small. It's so it's okay. It's 100 pages maybe. 120 yeah. pages. Even if you would allow me to mail this book to you <laughs> and you would get it in about a month. All right. I want you to have it if you're interested. Okay. And that is a novel from Singapore. Oh, okay. State of oh Emergency by Jeremy Tiang. This was a bail for me, but I think you might enjoy it more than I did. I couldn't quite, I didn't feel that the characterization was enough to carry me through the story, but the story was somewhat interesting about a widower. Well, he's not a, I don't know if his wife has died. His, di his wife left early in their marriage, and I think that was in the 1950s, and because she was a political activist. And in left, Singapore? Yeah, and left him with small children hmm. who he has raised, and now he's dying and kind of re reminiscing about all that. Hmm. The story was interesting. It didn't quite carry me with the characterization, but maybe it might work for you. It certainly had things that I was interested in. Have a look. Okay. You know what's funny? At the book expo, I met Kendra from The Reading mm. Woman. And Kendra was Kendra asking... Kendra Winchester, yeah. Kendra Winchester. And uh, she asked me about a uh, recommendation for Singapore books. Yeah. I'm not the correct person to ask about Singapore publications because I don't really read um, local books but I mentioned to Kendra probably you should try this oh really yeah okay because I heard uh, a lot of uh, good reviews okay. about it this. won some prizes in Singapore yeah, yeah exactly yeah so okay I'll take this will you take it I'll take this great and if you and don't then... like it send it to Kendra <laughs> hey Kendra <laughs> so will you it's get this it's, one it's, it's a book going around the world hey yeah, probably. Yeah, I would be yeah. really interested to hear what you think of it. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank Great. you. When you were last here, you were debuting a new business venture. What was that? Oh, my stationery shop. Stationery shop? Yes. That's not where somebody sits in the same place for a long time. It's the other meaning of stationery. <laughs> Paper and pens and... It is, actually... From, from which country? From Japan. From Japan. Well, it's an online store yes. for stationery, and um, I I don't really sell the pens, but uh, um, I sell like a cute items, like you know, for be like a post-it notes and uh, some bookish items and bookmarks, anything related to books because you know I love to read and I love stationery and combine those two together. Yeah. And it's like a subscription box, monthly subscription uh, yes, box? Yes, we have a subscription box. Uh, it uh, is actually one-time subscription. Okay, so you yeah. don't have to subscribe. You yeah. can just do a one-time purchase. Yes, yes, that's right. And uh, uh, otherwise, it's just like uh, it goes retail on the on the online store itself. Yep. Yeah. What's the name of it? Philosophia. 
Philosophia. I will put a link to the Philosophia subscription box or J uh, Japanese stationery shop yep. in the show notes. So I know for a fact that at least one or two of my subscribers have a fixation on Japanese stationery. So I think so. Yeah. They are so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Tell us more about your NYRB book club in Singapore. Well, it started with uh, me finding out about NYRBs last year. And, you know, I've been following a lot of people in Instagram, right? So I found this lady in Singapore who also loves NYRBs. Her name is uh, Jennifer Tan. She is in uh, Instagram. Uh, the account is called The Tireless Reader. Okay, so um, I contacted her and I say, hi, I'm actually, I love NYRB, so, so why don't we just do a buddy read or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we started with the door and then um, after that, I decided, hey, why not um, create a book club? So we call it NYRB Classics Reading Society. So I set a meetup uh, page for this. And it has now 64 members, mm, mm, mm. yeah? And we meet every month to discuss uh, books that we want to read and uh, the NYRBs. Unfortunately, because of the lack of interest of NYRBs in Singapore, um, there are only like maybe four to five people. You said you got about meeting. 60 plus members, yes. but about... Only four or five people. That's still pretty good. I think the discussion would be better with... Yeah, actually, I kind of worry about, you know, what, what I'm going to do if, like, uh, if the group is getting bigger yeah. to, like, 10 or 20. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, how, how are we going to discuss the books like that? Yeah. So, it's a cozy, small uh, book club. Um, and we have set, or, or we have picked the books until December. So, what, what now is June. Yep. That we have decided for each month until December. That's awesome. What's the next book you'll be discussing? Mm, basic Pearl. Oh, sorry, Basic Black with Pearl. Basic Black with Pearl by Helen Winesweg. Yes, it is. A Canadian writer. Yes. And I have shared this story a couple times. So very briefly, I read a Helen Winesweg story in an anthology of Canadian fiction in the 1990s, maybe mm -hmm. the 1980s, that I absolutely loved. And then I kind of carried a torch for Helen Winesweg all these years, wanting to read more by her, because she started getting published late in her life, like in her 60s, and then she mm -hmm. died when she was about 90, about 10 or 15 years ago. And she's had only two novels and one collection of short stories yep. published. And I read, it was for, I think, novellas in November last year. That's, that's a title? No, there's a reading challenge oh, okay. on social media to read as many novellas mm. in November as you can. And I chose one of hers, and I have to double check what that was. Passing Ceremony. Passing Ceremony. Yeah. And tell, tell us what you think of so far of yours, which is called Basic, Basic Black with Black Pearl. Purple. You okay. go first. <laughs> I'm not liking it so far. It's sorry Why? to say, but I mean, like at the start, it sounds like... A story about you know a couple's having affair but w while I'm reading through it it's like I'm thinking that what was she doing is she like a just having you know delusion a delusion or a dream or yes is it a dream is it a delusion is she a spy is the guy actually really around you know yeah was it all a figment of her imagination exactly so I struggled reading this and that. I have of uh, what 20 pages left and it's, you know it's uh, it I can easily read it in one hour or so but I keep dragging it keep putting it off yeah um, passing ceremony was exactly the same so I'm oh, so okay. disappointed after 20 plus years of waiting to finally read something else by Helen Winesweg I didn't like it at all I gave it three stars which to me is uh, not a not it's a very a good book yeah. and sounds like basic black with pearls is similar so mm. i have a unscheduled but committed buddy read with shani of shani reads another booktuber to For... buddy read basic black with pearls okay so shani i think i'm backing out sorry <laughs> i'm pre-bailing sorry shani 
Her collection of short stories is A View from the Roof, and mm -hmm. that short story really knocked my socks off when I was a young man. So maybe she's a short story writer Probably. rather than a novelist. Probably, yeah. I have a running theory. Why don't I bounce that off you? Do you read many, much in the way of short stories? Mm. Are you a short story reader? Not really, not really. So we won't go f too far down this uh, path, but I have a theory that writers only excel in one form or the other. Mm -hmm. If you're a short story writer, your novels aren't very good. Mm -hmm. If you're a novelist, your short stories aren't very good. Well, can you think of an exception? Jumpa Lahiri. I haven't read her novels. Yeah. Which probably. novel of yours have you read? I read all of her books. Oh. Yeah. I read her debut collection of short stories. Interpreter of Melodies. Interpreter of Melodies. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Yes, five I've, stars. Me too. Yeah. So I'm going to read The Namesake. The Namesake, Unaccustomed Earth. I think Unaccustomed Earth is a short story as well. Mm. And... Uh, the Lowland. Okay, with, she's written a few novels. Yeah. Yeah, I want to read them all because no, I love yeah. the short stories. So that could be one. Eric Carl Anderson says that Joyce Carol Oates excels mm. in both, but he would say that. He's Eric Carl Anderson oh. and he worships the ground Joyce Carol Oates walks okay. on. <laughs> and maybe he's right. I finally read her novella Blackwater last November for mm. novellas in November and I loved it. Okay. It's the only thing I've read by her. Do you know about her? Uh, I heard about Blackwater. It's in my TBR. All I ever knew about Joyce Carol Oates for decades was she publishes two or three books of literary fiction a year. Wow. She's so prolific. That is hardworking. It, sure. And and I developed this prejudice against her that yeah. anybody who publishes like that, that's like Enid Blyton level of output. She can't be any good. So I'm yeah. always suspicious and cynical. My favorite booktuber, Eric Carl Anderson, he absolutely adores her. Personally, they're friends, but he loves all of her stuff. Now, she writes in a wide variety of genres and stuff, so mm -hmm. I'm not interested in everything she writes. But I did read Blackwater. I really loved it. I want to read more of her literary fiction. Okay. But he says, Sean, your theory is bogus. bogus. <laughs> Joyce Carol Oates can write excels in both so okay. i haven't read any joyce carol Oates short stories so okay. i'll try that but alice monroe well she only ever wrote short stories she says i think she's really good i think she she got an award for short stories right she, she wrote Dear won Life? the nobel she won the yeah. nobel and yeah. she's written won maybe the um is it for the short stories i think she ran think won so. the man booker yeah won the, i can't remember um, margaret atwood's short stories aren't very good uh, Mavis Gallant's novels aren't very good, so mm -hmm. I, I just think that people tend to oh, excel in, in the okay. main. But Jhumpa Lahiri, I'll test that theory. Yes, Jhumpa Lahiri. And I'll also test Joyce Carol Oates, but yep. yeah. Jhumpa Lahiri also wrote a non-fiction, in about, other words. Yes. Um, about her learning Italian. That's right. Um, that's really good. Coincidentally, uh, Natalie of My Reading Days uh, mm -hmm. just posted today about reading that and really enjoying it. Yeah. 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 So, that's yeah really I'm good. really on the Jupa Lahiri train. Mm -hmm. So what, what are you going to read next? What I'm going to read next? Oh, I got this book from Book Expo, As Again, Yes, by Mary Beth Keane. Yeah, you and yeah. Kendra, Kendra picked yeah. it up. Yes. And why did you pick it up? As we said, Cecilia and I both don't like knowing too much about a book before we go in. But what can you say about the book in terms of what it what Actually, drew your I interest? I don't know. It Just was, Kendra, Kendra no, pressure? No, you see, I was a bit lost at the book expo because I don't really read, you know, these uh, the, the latest publications of books. But I just check the Goodreads. Goodreads review. Yeah, yeah. Briefly see through. Scan it. Yeah, just scan it. Story about two families or something like that. So probably, you know, it's something in my alley. That is a really enigmatic title. Set in nineteen early 1970s in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Two families that are neighboring. And you already says you're currently reading. Exactly. You've started it. First page. <laughs> so how was the first page? It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Is it literary? 
Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay. It's got a 4.14 rating. For new releases, uh, the rating, I don't trust it. Yeah. Oh, Cindy. Oh, Cindy read it? She's added it. Oh. She loved Keane's earlier novel, Fever. Okay. Apparently, the earlier novel was historical fiction, and this is more like a family saga. Mm Mm-hmm. She found it on put downable once she got into it. Oh, cool. So that bodes well. Yes. Because we know Cindy, she can be really tough. <laughs> All right. Well, if you like it, I might try it. Yeah. I'll let you know. Great. Uh, I'm going to start reading On Earth, We Are Briefly Gorgeous. But this title does not apply to Cecilia and I. On Earth, Cecilia and I are continuously from cradle to grave <laughs> yeah. gorgeous. Yes. But the rest of the poor mortals... <laughs> Are only briefly gorgeous. This is a gay novel. I think it's gay. The author is gay. Ocean Vuong is a Vietnamese American writer, and his collection of poetry. I don't like reading poetry that mm. that much, and his poetry just obliterated me. It is called Night Sky with Exit Wounds, mm, and okay. this is his debut novel. And I have heard nothing but superlatives, really po- extremely positive reviews. So I'm going to start it tomorrow. Gorgeous cover. Gorgeous cover. Yeah. Briefly or otherwise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we got for Tipsy Bookish Chat. Tip- All right. Tipsy Bookish Chat. One half of <laughs> what this do you discussion. Say again? <laughs> Tipsy <laughs> Bookish Chat. Say that three times with or without alcohol. Yeah, this is why I drink. It's what is that? It's uh, a peach flavored water. As opposed to wine. Mine is grape flavored water. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. We're going to go out and scrounge up some food now. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you.